Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're taking a look at the Gigabyte Z87X-UD3H motherboard and the UEFI dual BIOS that's in there. <clears throat> Alright, taking a look at the layout, you're going to notice something very different. Uh, gone is the 3D BIOS layout, which is uh, actually a very good thing. The 3D BIOS implementation and the UEFI implementation from Gigabyte back then was a little bit buggy. It was also a little bit sluggish. As you'll notice, the layout is very clean. You have uh, CPU status over here, which is going to tell you everything that's going on. Uh, DD, you know, you have memory status and system status. So taking a look, you can see what your core ratios are, your voltages, all of this. Um, it, we're in the middle of uh, kind of testing the uh, uh, how fast we can overclock our processor. So we, right now we've got it at 49 uh, is the uh, ratio. You can see we have the manual, uh, the CPU base clock set to manual. We have our uh, PCIe clock at 100. The gear ratio is 100, so the host clock value is 100. You know, not, not much uh, interesting there. We are at 49 on a multiplier. System memory is at 2133. CPU core voltage 1.35. DRAM's at 1.6. This is your basic performance layout. Um, you can actually set up your own, <coughs> and here you'll, you're going to see some standard options. But under here, you can set up exactly what you want. So you can add that memory, which is kind of nice. You can put different things in that you want on your own BIOS layout. And you can add, you can have up to four of these. So that'll take you and set up all the overclocking features you want in your own layout, which is kind of nice. So looking at the rest of the BIOS, you, on the front page you also have some shortcuts. You have a classic setup. So if you click that, it's going to take you back here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get back to the uh, new mode. Four is going to take you, F, hitting F2 takes you back to this. You have your different profiles, saving profiles, performance, frequency, peripherals. Uh, resolution toggle is actually going to take you to a, a really kind of ugly, ugly resolution on this monitor. And then it's going to bring you back down. You also have some other information here, which is going to be your temperature, CPU and system, DRAM voltage, and also CPU voltage, and then of course fan speed is going to show up here. Along the bottom, we have some basic information about the system, motherboard type, BIOS, the BIOS date, the BIOS ID, the CPU type, all of that, and of course the total system memory. Let's take a look at our performance options. So this is going to be very similar to what you see on the home screen. It's just going to actually be that performance. Then you can go in here and take a look at memory. This is where you would enter in all of the information about the different memory settings that you want to do. You have options for voltage. So you have your different types of voltages, uh, CPU VRIN load line calibration, uh, VRIN protection, your uh, current protection, all of that's going to be on your voltage. The PC health, uh, you can also take a look at CPU voltage, this is where you would configure everything for that. So um, let's see, go back, chipset voltage control, very similar to what you're used to, DRAM voltage control, same thing. And of course you have your PCI, uh, PC health status. It's just going to be the same thing. This is just turning on all of your different options for monitoring, fan speed monitoring. Do you, right now we have these set to full speed, again, because we're water cooling. And then, of course, under miscellaneous, very similar to what you're used to. You can set it to what you want, and then you have your 3D Mark of one boost. System information is going to be on the next tab. You know, very self-explanatory. Um, display policy, full HD first or VGA. Startup page, you can tell it where you want to start. If you want to start it on your own BIOS that you set up, you can select a different uh, wallpaper, including uh, files that you want. If you want to put something on a file, so you could actually set this up with your own background, which is kind of nice. Administrator password, user password, so if you want to set it to where only administrators can get in. And of course you have a nice calendar on the side. Uh, BIOS features, very, very similar to what you got. Full screen logo, you want to turn that on or off, fast boot. Um, everything here, Windows 8 features, so this is if you want to set up, uh, you know, secure boot, all of that, virtualization. These are similar to what used to be called advanced features on a lot of BIOSes, but now they're just, they're just normal. So network stack, that's kind of your pixie boot, uh, secure boot mode, you can set it to standard or custom, secure boot, you can turn it on or off here, system mode state, and you also have peripherals, again, very similar, initial display, which PCIe slot do you want to kick off first? you want the LAN controller on, uh, everything's right here. So gigabit network connection, you can take a look at that, take a look at your link status, and go back to dashboard mode. 
And of course the Marvel SATA configuration. Again, it's going to take you back here to this uh, older BIOS setting. So go to SATA config. Again, very self-explanatory. and show you what's plugged in where and what's actually going on with it. So here you see our Kingston uh, SKC30 drives, software presence supported, Super I.O., your serial port, Intel Smart Connect, and of course you go into your power management. You can set up power loading, set to auto, disabled, resume on alarm, resume, you know, wake up on LAN, all of that's right here. And then of course you have your options to exit, boot override, all of these are going to be kind of very similar. You have your Q flash, load custom settings, save custom settings. Pretty straightforward, I mean, but it's one of the things here is that it's just a much cleaner layout than what we've seen before. Um, I, I like this move on the part of Gigabyte. It gives you everything you want kind of at a glance and makes it much easier for you to <clears throat> configure and you know, tweak your board if you want. This is really good features for overclocking, even though this is not necessarily what you would consider an overclocking board. They do have boards that are much more geared towards overclocking, but this one has been very great so far as what we've seen. We've seen really good performance. We are going to go ahead and push this up to the 5 gigahertz level, see if we can get it stable there. But so far, everything that we've done here has been just excellent. And one thing we do want to point out here under performance, we'll go into advanced core settings is the uncore ratio. Now this was a big deal under the uh, older uh, CPUs like the 980X where you had your uncore frequencies and you wanted to make sure that they were balanced. Here by being able to set this and push it back or either back in front of or behind where you have the clock set, you can actually create a different performance profile and find a really nice stable setting for this. <clears throat> Again we're in the process of kind of tweaking this so we haven't settled on a particular uncore ratio but we have been able to move it backwards and forwards to see where it sits and what's actually going to allow us to get the best performance and the best overclock. One of the downsides of overclocking is you always hit that performance peak. You overclock so far at 5 gigahertz, okay great, I'm at 5 gigahertz, but it's not performing as well as it should. You hit that curve. By backing off or increasing the uncore you can actually break that curve and get better performance and that's what we've seen so far on the 4770K and especially <clears throat> on this board. By adjusting that a little bit either ahead of or behind what we have the, uh, the ratio set, we've been able to see a much more improved performance over what we would typically get at that particular clock speed on this board without changing this or leaving it just exactly set to the same ratio. Now, of course, Gigabyte says that if you're going to change this, you need to make sure that uh, you know it should be equal to or higher than. Uh, again, based on stability and what we've seen so far, we've been able to set it slightly behind or slightly ahead of um, what the actual clock speed is and to get better stability and also better performance. So that kind of wraps up everything in the, uh, the Gigabyte uh, dual UEFI BIOS on the Z87X-UD3H. Um, again, it's a clean layout, much better uh, layout than what we've seen before from Gigabyte, and it works very well. It's also very responsive, as you've noticed. You know, when you get into the older uh, classic layout, it, um, you start running into the mouse slows down. It doesn't render as well. You have issues, you know, finding the right spot you need to click on the different links. Here, we didn't see any of that. Very clean, very click, very quick, very precise. All right, so we're uh, finished with our UEFI BIOS. Again, this is part of our performance re review of the Z87X UD3H. And we're also going to take a look at some of the overclocking tools that Gigabyte uh, drops in there, as well as the performance once we're finished and we find our maximum stable overclock. As always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button, make sure you share with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to us so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you. Thank you.